Guys, what is going on? Savage here. In today's video, we will be doing an in-depth breakdown of some random gameplays and putting you in the shoes of these players and teaching you the do's and don'ts of Warzone so you guys can go out there and get better. If you do enjoy the video, please leave it a like. Let's get this video to 500 likes. Subscribe to the channel today. All right, Wolfpack, again, during these videos, I want you guys to really pay attention to the pause frames. We'll watch the gunfights in its entirety. The moment the gunfight ends, even if they end up getting third party, the moment that certain fight ends, we're gonna pause it. We're gonna discuss the mistakes the enemies made, as well as the guy we're spectating. Most of the mistakes players make is something they do on a daily basis, and it's common mistakes that most players make. I'd go out to say 85% of players make these same mistakes, and that's the point of this video. Put yourself in their shoes, learn from their mistakes. All right, right off the bat, we're not wasting any time at all. Grabbing a scav, we definitely need some money. We do have a free loadout drop. Now, I'm all for scavs, I'm all for money, but there's a few problems with this. One, we get our loading in 42 seconds, right? Um, clearly he was landing in we could have all just floated waited for our team to get together and then landed on it wherever it was as you're floating in the sky pay attention to the timer you can kind of direct your loadout to go wherever you want if all of your homies are coming back from the gulag too not really sure what green's doing i'm gonna assume since we all died he's got zero dollars he's coming back from gooly as well now the second thing you need to look for is scavs i love scavs i love money uavs gotta love it right as much money as you can get all the money Two problems with it. It's still early game. There's 108 enemies left. So there are going to be people coming for this helicopter or the scav we just picked up. You're not the only team regaining. So I'm glad to see him have an armor. But again, you're putting yourself in a bad spot picking up the scav because if anyone's around you and they're paying attention, which they should be, they're going to see that scav disappear and they might come three stack you. So just be on alert. Um, I, I definitely respect it. Just be on alert for it. Well, that scared the shit out of me. So weird. I went to turn up my volume and he just, boom. Um, so we lost, uh, clearly we lost blue on blue mark. He needs to hurry up and get out of here as well. This is where looting fast and efficiently comes to play. We just need to get the scav, get the few boxes down here and dip away, son, because they will be looking for us. You can sense a little bit of panic in his looting too. He keeps running the walls and shit and I get it. All right, so right here, you have a decision to make. Now, I, I like this decision. This is the decision to always make, but there are situational based changes, right? So right now, we don't think the enemy's near us. I think he's probably close. So the moment we get the buyback, there's a chance we could die. You got to scan the area before you just make a charge to this. Use deductive reasoning to figure out what your next move is. All right, like that. Buying both his teammates back before they finish the last scav and taking the balloon out of here to quickly get away. Now... This is questionable. We have a last scav to get. We definitely want to get that to get some money. And then with that money, what could we do? We could throw up a UE real quick, right? So I say this because if we all land on the buy or on the loadout, it's the fact that somebody just killed our teammate in this house, their load is probably close as well. They probably see that load. They're probably relatively close and they just heard you buy someone back. So all eyes are going to be on you. So what I would do in this situation, if I was winter and only winter, really, the other two, I'd like for them to float over. Don't just dive on it. Float over, ping out any enemies, look around, right? I got a bad feeling they won't do that. What I would do if I was winter is go finish this last scav, get enough money and hopefully get a UAV. Um, that way you can see where these guys are. I hate diving in blind, especially when we're able to just get the scav real quick and get the money. And even if you don't have enough money for UAV, which you might not, one of your homies can land on you and y'all can get it together while the other one scans around. Blue's marking low. This is where, this is where we died at last time. Watch your ass. That looks like a fresh buy. The buys aren't usually, the teammate buybacks are not usually, the flares aren't that up that long. We hear shots coming a good distance to the 210 degree trying to scan for enemies but if he hasn't looted this he literally got the kill and dip so he's probably not around it's very rare for enemy players to bait out crates and houses um, most players just open them because they want a sound whore anyway so you know I, I like i like that he checked the corners first first not ever hating on that at all clear your fucking corners rats are a bitch but you don't have to worry too much about it if you hear the crates in the building Not sure why we're just avoiding the last scav. I'm going to be honest. 
Don't really know what we're doing. Oh, there's orange. Thank God. All right, so Winter's on the hunt right now. Now, look, it's getting real dangerous. They're, they're fighting somebody else. So he's a player here. He's got two teammates, and so does the enemy team as well. So we could be putting ourselves in a very bad situation. It looks like he's going to land on this building. We'll play out what I think he should have done after the fight. He's probably gonna die. Smart of him putting this lip on his backside um, against his back so that the guy in the window can't kill him. But now we're in a 1v3. Crazy for that. Oh, that sucks. Mm. Mm. All right, so the moment he landed on this rooftop, I knew he was dead. And, and that's exactly where it looked like he was gonna go. He was looking at it, he saw the enemy. For a second, kind of looked like he might divert. Um, but again, you gotta play the whole situation. Don't just focus on the enemy on the roof. Don't just focus on the enemies over here. One, we committed to the roof dive, not even finding his teammates. It wasn't until later on we realized there was a second player here, and then of course the third in the window. Where do you go? Well, you wanna maintain the best positioning always, right? Is this rooftop the best positioning? Fuck no. You saw the second floor story window, Shot him and downed him. That's not even the rooftop, nor is it this rooftop. So where I would go is this rooftop here. You have a great vantage point on the roof right here. You have a great vantage point on any other enemies rotating. And even if he wants to run away, the only safety this guy has is if you shoot him and he jumps off the back and goes in the building. But you don't you don't risk your life on that alone. So 100% land on top of this roof right here um, and, and keep your keep yourself safe to where you have a vantage point on everything around you. If, you're, if you decide to land on a rooftop, that's not the highest point. There's other roofs higher than that. You're probably going to die. Not to mention, that was just one of the teams. So I actually skipped it, but his teammate had the right play and came to this rooftop. Not really sure why we're burst firing the Grawl. This is a pretty accurate weapon. There's really no reason to burst fire it. Oh, never mind. I stand corrected. Look, Graw's accurate, very easy control recoil. I still would have pulled the trigger because, I mean, control and recoil is not that hard, but I, I respect Hus for it. He's got 16 bullets in his reservoir, or his, his reserve, I should say. Uh, he's got 16 bullets in his reserve, so he's tap firing it just in case he couldn't control the recoil. So I, I can I can respect it and understand it. Guys, if you're trying to get better at control and recoil, and you're trying to get more energy to get out there and get better, don't forget to try sneak. Guys, Seek Energy is literally the greatest energy drink in the world, but not to mention for gamers as well. It gives you that focus without the crash. Let me ask you, those favorite energy drinks you drink on, how's that crash feeling? Are you able to fucking ride one for the entire day? No, no, you're not. I know damn well I'm an energy drink whore. Sneak is the way, guys. I do not rep companies that suck, and that's a fact. So trust me, guys. If you don't, buy the sample pack, use code SAVAGE, and let me know what you think, man. All right, so now we're gonna push over here. We've got a team around Blue Mark. Great job pinging it for his team to communicate. Now, where do you think they're at? I'm gonna go with the house. Let's see how they approach this. Now, pull it up in a vehicle is fine, um, but it is dangerous because they could instantly see for you, stick your nage you, or just team beam you. So you gotta be very careful. The problem with jumping out around these hills is, again, they'll know where you're at and they'll just be focused on you. So taking the vehicle is kind of a ballsy move. I do respect it, but I would want to close the gap, push the building and jump out as fast as possible and then start fighting. Or as you're driving the building or driving up to the building, you should drop a teammate off in the front and then you come around the back so that while they're focused on you, your teammate can come in and shoot them from behind, essentially. All right, well, we're kind of doing that right now with him jumping out. I think it's a little too early again because they're going to have a lot of distance to cover without getting shot. I don't see anybody. Again, I'm assuming they're in the house. There's a guy in the window. Well, you can have perfect strategy all you want. You can't. You cannot fix that move. What are the odds the guys happen to be in a whole other house? It looks like yellow's kind of in the blended right now as well. Any day now. There we go. Hey, all right, yellow's dead. And here, Winter is running back. 
All right, so a, a lot of questionable shit. One, push that as a team. You're, you're confronting a team of campers by well, essentially by yourself. You dropped your teammate off way too early. You didn't even you didn't even scan around. You granted, I, I probably wouldn't have either. Um, but basically, this got picked off one at a time. Copy cash drop. I would have liked to have seen them all three push up in the vehicle. Push that house. He's lagging so bad, my God. Um, And fight him as a squad, man. So many times, players are just getting picked off because they just think they can do it all themselves. You can't, man. I don't care how bad teammates or enemies are. I don't care how bad they seem. I don't care if they're all running mill sims in level one. If it's 3v1 or 4v1, they stand a pretty good chance to shit down your throat. And again, drop your teammate off on the bottom of that ledge. You saw him get shot. You saw him die on the mini map. That was just wild. Repositioning. Ooh. Ooh. Trigger discipline, maybe. Oh, yeah. Also, guys, the new breakfast flavor is fucking amazing. It tastes like... It tastes like sun -kiss. That's exactly what it tastes like. It's labeled cereal, but... It's called Breakfast Orange, and it fucking tastes good. It literally mind. tastes like Sunkissed. Alright, so this is a little questionable, too. We're putting ourselves in a dumb position right now. I get why we're doing it. We saw the chop, and we panicked. I get it. I don't mind you breaking away and playing that building we were just playing. What was that? The outhouse? I don't know what to call it, right? I don't mind you playing this building. You can hear the enemies push. You still have a relatively decent position. Um, they're on a little bit higher ground, but it's not that drastic. But we just put ourselves in a very unfortunate position. We're now in a ravine. We have very little cover. No matter if even if they chase us, um, they're gonna they're gonna see us. This is just a bad spot for us to be in. I don't think he's gonna survive unless these two teams happen to be different teams end up fighting each other, which it sounds like they are. Blue goes down. So we're seeing a habit. We're seeing a habitual habit most players do. And again, this is why we make the videos. What what is what did we just witness twice? Our team, Hulk and Huss, pushing up in different areas by themselves and getting picked off one at a time by themselves, right? Secondly, Winter, the last man alive, running away. Running away. Why? Bitch, we don't have any money. We're broke. What are you going to do? Where are you going? You're going to go loot all these buildings we already looted? You're just going to run, run off into the wild, do your best bet? Just play the fight. One, if we would have worked as a squad and shot together, it probably would have been a better. But two, even though our team died, a helicopter joined the fight. That's another squad. Third party them. It's just amazing to me. Not to mention we had a kill, right? We had a kill, so there are only two guys left in that house, and we don't even know if our teammates got kills or not. The moment Winter's on his own, he runs away, and there are times you want to run and bail out for sure, but after the first time that they wiped you and you go back a second time, they wipe you again, you better just fight it out because you got to get them at the lobby now anyway. They're clearly your weakness in this lobby, so why not just fight it out, and if you die, reset, and if you, and if you work together, who knows? You might not fucking die at all. So now we're going to be regaining for the next God knows how long. I'm going to edit out the, re the rest of this until we get into some action. Because this is, I can already tell, is going to be boring as fuck. All right. So now, if you guys are paying attention to the, the kill count, I think we went from like 40-something players to 29. I can't remember. I watched the whole thing. But it literally has been boring. We put ourselves in a position by ourselves once again to fight an entire squad by ourselves once again. Would you walk into a fucking wolf den, punch a wolf in the face, and then run away? No, you won't. What do you expect to happen, homie? What do you expect? You did all that to buy your teammates back and just to split off by yourself again and try to go solo dolo, which is weird because both times our team died, Winter ran away to regain because I thought he clearly didn't have enough confidence in his own gameplay to win the fight he was already in twice, right? Twice, but then all of a sudden he buys a teammate back and runs off. I'm, I'm fucking mind blown. I am mind blown.
Look at this. I mean, look at blue, look at orange. We are in a regain. This is the most crucial time to play together because we don't have weapons. We don't have anything. We're going back to the same house. I don't know if they're still there or not. There's some weapons behind that rock though. All right, guys, look, look at this beast. Y'all know I'm a mouse and keyboard player, but when I got my hands on an aim controller, my God, I fell in love. I mean, just the finish of it, the custom design, the fact that I could put my logo on there, I could put my gamer tag right here if I wanted. I could, the customizations is endless, but not just that guys, the paddles. I know after switching from mouse and key and going to a PlayStation controller, how hard it is to slide cancel, B hop, ping, shit like that. The more fluid you can hit buttons with your hands, the better your gaming experience will be. Uh, make sure you guys check it out. Build you a custom controller, man. Use code STAB to check out to get a nice discount on that controller. Putting you guys on game right here. I've used a bunch of custom controllers and pro controllers. And I'm telling you right now, dude, these are the best I've ever, ever seen. And I've played with almost all of them. What are you marking it for? Pick it up. Oh, he's got it. He's got his custom KG. All right, never mind. I was panicking for him. I love how he's watching his teammate fall in from the sky. Okay. I think he was being nice and trying to give it to a squad member, but he's like, fuck green. He's not coming over here. Again, not really sure what we're doing pushing this house. There's no loot in here. Duh. Oh, we're coming here to sit. All right. Hell yeah. This makes sense. I really wish I could pull up the map. But again, notice the separation. I don't care if you're playing with randoms. I don't give a shit. There's no reason for your team to be split off. Even if you're better than your random teammates. Even if you're like, I'm tired of doing this. Let's go out and get kills. If your teammates want to hunker down and you can't win solo fights by yourself, you should do it. You should man up and team up. It's too many times, too many times players, they see, they see multiple players and they only focus on one. Let's rewind. So one, notice the heartbeat. And two, notice the amount of players. There's a guy across the street right now. We just saw it in the window. Again, guy on the rock right here. We just saw him. Two blips, saw it on a heartbeat. One enemy, two enemies. We see it, but he doesn't, he doesn't recognize it. Now, why is that? Tunnel vision. That's all it is. And the players that use a heartbeat, they don't count the players. They don't try to realize what positions they're in. They don't try to like, you basically mentally have to like have a third D, a three D like overhead of a map. You've got to look at yourself in the third body experience and be like, okay, this guy's over here, this guy's over here, this guy's over here. This I'm going to play this fight, right? The moment this guy's cracked, you don't jump out the window where his teammates coming from. You, you lead the enemy. He's running below us to our left. There's a back door to this building. Just go out there, shoot him in the fucking head, right? He's behind us now. He's on this side of the house. There's a door right here to our right. He's about to come in right here, right where this dead silence thing's at. We'll talk about that in a second. Right where that's at. Um, There's a door right there. Just go out there and finish him off. He's already cracked. But no, we, for some reason, players haven't thought like that yet. I guess from the lack of reps, again, look at the kill count. No hate, but notice. And we waste daddy. Why are we dead and sitting in the room? All right. Now, before you jump out of a window, unless you're literally being chased, and sometimes you just got to, when we, when we have some breathing room like this, you don't just jump out of a fucking window. One, you ignored the second player three times. We saw him once. We saw him twice. We saw him the heartbeat third time, right? And, and you, you should have known he was there in the first place, but at least look, even if you didn't. Look at this man. It looks like Sasquatch coming at us with a stick. Easy target. All you do is peek the window, ADS, shoot him in the face, boom. His boyfriend to our left is cracked. He's going to be plating up right now, boom. This is an easy 1v2 fight. We just completely threw because we are tunnel visioned. And again, look at the movement. A lot of mistakes with this fight. Movement between us and the enemy. I'm not going to make you guys rewatch that whole thing. Look at this. 
We jump out. I want you guys to notice how Hus plants his feet and doesn't fucking move. He might size up a little bit. It's not nothing crazy. And look what the enemy does. Just a simple jump to the left. Threw him all, all whack. He had no idea what the fuck's going on. Guys. <sighs> Always play the totality of the situation. Never just play one enemy at a time. There's a lot in this meta right now. The four and three stacking meta. Weird blue goes down by himself too. While Winter's out here fucking looting. It's a, it's a weird trend we see with Winter. He just wants to loot his dick off. And not play the fucking game with his squad. I'm honestly pissed off at Winter. All right, so we've got an enemy just on the, on the top. We've got footsteps in my headset to the right-hand side. I don't know if you can hear it or not. My audio settings are tweaked to the max. Um, if you guys want, if you guys are on PC and you want better audio settings for Warzone to hear footsteps, um, use this company I, I use called Foves. I'll link them in the description below. Let them know your boy Savage sent them, uh, sent you guys. But yeah, awesome, awesome audio tweak. Not sponsored, not anything. Just honestly, shout out to them for doing a great job. I can hear footsteps again. We've got th <laughs> there's a there's a fucking herd coming towards the sun. Y'all heard that? I know that one for sure. There's a herd on the right hand side. We're about to we're about to get fucked. We're about to get fucked sideways. We're about to fuck us up. That light. Oh no. Oh uh 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 surprise! And he tried to run away again. Your boy Winter just loves fucking sneaking bitches and running away. He was that kid in school. Yeah, he was. No, guys, what the? No. Okay, look. No, what's that song? No one to hold them, no one to fold them. Shit like that. I don't know. I don't know if that's the lyrics, but it's pretty good. No one to shoot at the guys and no one the fuck to run away, dude. Again, he's running away from fights. He really probably shouldn't have. The second fight in particular. And this one right here, he should never even engage. Bitch, you hear, when I heard that herd coming, I'm running away. Not to mention, we got a scav to do. What is with these people and not wanting to finish their scavs? You got objectives on the map that gives you money to get your homies back. Yeah, here we are trying to 1v40 the world. Mind blowing, guys. Come on, man, get it together. Again, three stacking meta. It sucks. I hate it. You have to adapt as a player. Not only will the weapons change, the strategy will change, the map will change, all the variables of BR, which makes BR so great. All the variables are all ever changing. You'll play a certain way for three months, something changes, and now you have to adjust everything. But Winner clearly was not on sneak. Fuck, this whole video, I thought we were playing trios. Weird, we're playing quads. Holy shit. I'm a little th okay. Oh, I'll wait. All right, this could be a long fight. Let's talk about this. So, fancy movement, fancy footwork, nothing too fancy, but decent enough. Mistake number one, and there's not many, honestly. We're in a fight. Jump out the window to get a flank. Our teammate gets the kill. So now we're now we're jumping back in. I get that. We see the guy right here. He makes an instant breakaway, uses a stem. Great choice. Now the second stem's a little wasted, in my opinion. I would want to wait for him to hit me at least again to see if he's pushing before I wasted my last stem. Mistake number one. Not a big one, but it's a mistake. Mistake number two, turning back towards the enemy. Now I get, I get the idea and I'm, and I'm for it. You know, it, it's a risky move, but I get it. But wh what help are we going to be? Again, there, again, there might be comms, you know, blue might be like, he's one tapped. And even if he isn't, we're like, fuck, we are too, but I think I'm better. So he's making a dive in. So I respect going in for his teammate being knocked. I do. My biggest issue is what comes next. So we've got him on mini map. He's clearly jumped out the window or gone down this hallway, right? We need to plate the fuck up. We are no help to our squad without plates. We'll be able to shoot three bullets before we get knocked. We are no help to our squad without plates. So J-Dub 209, he goes for the res while we're plating up and sound horn, 100%. Now a lot of people are like, but Savage, look, 
Well, if you're if he's going for the res and you got to fight, what if you don't have place? What if you? What if what if these knights? No, we we've only killed one of their teammates. There are still two teammates up. We've got to get plated. We can sit here and plate, and he J Dub can cancel the the res. He can, there's so many things we can do to finish the fight. But right now, dude, we got to plate up. That's the most important part. We need to plate up. And while Type R is fucking being res, once he's up, he needs to plate up. No one's here at this second, at this moment in time. Play it up. It's all about decision making. J-Dub goes for the res. The guy that's fully plated goes for the res. Now, if for some reason we had no plates, we don't have ammo, we can't fight it, I get it. Then J-Dub needs to hold it because he's got ammo. I understand that. We don't have weapons. It's fine. But this situation here, with what we have, we 100% could fight this out and also play it up. We can get off two plates before anyone pushes us. We don't hear footsteps, so they're not that close. You get a second chance. Only footstep we hear is uh, he's on the outside or left hand side. So again, he's on the outside of the building. Played up. Gonna give me a fucking aneurysm. We gotta get out of this corner. Yep. Yep. I'll let it finish. We put ourselves in a kill box. Funny C4 from your boy. We just threw the game right there with that. With that. So I'm not going to rewind too much, but let's just rewind a little bit, right? Let's get us to a good point right here. I told you guys I heard footsteps on the left hand side. So right outside the door. When we close those doors, when we close these doors right here, we got shot at. So clearly there's an enemy right there, right? So remember him. Remember, the fight's not just about 1v1, it's about the totality of the situation. So, we get snapped, what do we do? Let's just say there's a reason why Type R keeps going down as much as he does. Puts himself vulnerable. Then, without fucking plating, fucking Rambo here just runs out there like he don't give a fuck about nothing. Remember, this is fucking quads, homie. You got multiples. Not to mention, he's getting shot at from inside the building. Look at the mini map. He's getting shot from this side over here. We've also got a ping in front of us to the right. Look at these tracers. That's from our left. There's the guy on the right. Now, Type R is dead. He's fucked. GG, homie. What do you do? Well, you don't do this. And if you do do this, don't say anything. If you do this, don't go for the fucking thirst and definitely don't sit here and hide. Look at this. This has, look at this. He's going for the res. We're sitting. What are we doing? No. You get the fuck out of here. Either A, both y'all go back in that door and try to 2v1 this asshole, or B, try to make a climb out the window. We put our first off, we shouldn't be here in the first fucking place. That's just wild. So we knew there was a guy to the left. We knew there was a guy to the right. And we knew there was a guy on the outside. Ain't nobody rotating from outside gatekeeping you to go around inside the building when this team's already there. Hell no. This was an easy prediction. This was a massive fuck up. And it's something we see all the time. Now, I don't mean to be harsh. I don't mean to be cruel. I don't mean to be loud or vocal. But this game is three years old. Three years. No. And again, they're the level 11 and stuff because of the season reset. So that's not a fair. I'm not. He, Savage. He's a lower level player. Forgive him. No. Absolutely not. No. That's that. That is that. Wild. And I don't think they were like a terrible team. They definitely weren't the best, but the guy we were spectating, H2B1320 Racing. What? All right. Moving here. Fire station identified. But he had decent movement. All right, so let's recover. Okay, we're using, all right, we're using this. Not my favorite sniper in the world, but it's just me. I see people slay with it still, kind of. Blue's in a fight, but Blue's also in the gas. There's a guy above us to our left-hand side, and we need to make our way to the buy station, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's that should be first and foremost. First off, again, 
he's finally realized in the sky that, again the arrow the arrows above it means he's higher than you the arrows below it means he's lower than you it's just it's just what it means so the moment we saw the the arrow above instant in the sky we're at the highest point in front of us there's no reason to, to look down One teammate back. We've got... We might have money for the Lodi. I would hold off on spending anything right now. It depends on how much money sparata has got. Let's see. We're broke as fuck. Never mind. We need $800 more. Oh, you hate to see it. I'm not sure if he bought anything. I th it looked like the money went down for a second. It did go down. So that's the problem. That's a very big problem, right? Like, like, look at this. Again, this comes down to communication. This is a big deal. We needed, we needed eight hundred dollars more, and how much did we spend? Eleven six. Fifteen hundred dollars. So I'm assuming you bought plates, right? Plates are important for sure. I'm for that, but to be honest, I'd rather my guns. That is a situational thing. Whatever you guys prefer. Again, dude, if I'm buying back two homies and they're decent players and we need our weapons, by all means, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to get it done, make it work. Um, we've got a plate box, by the way. Just just a little little audible in that bitch right there. So it doesn't make sense why Buckaroo bought fucking plates. You asshole. You fucking asshole. Um Yeah. Just things like that, guys. Make sure you're counting your money. Make sure you're trying to, again, use 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 the brain that we all have and say, if I have two teammates down, it's late game. We're, and again, we have a loadout on the ground, but you can't always bank on that because it's end game. People will be watching that motherfucker. I would have thrown Lodi. Again, we have $9,200. Remember the $1,500 he spent? Oh, that sucks. Now, here's a plate box. Thank God you bought plates, buckaroo Thank God. Did he just actually look? He actually... Wait, what the fuck did you just do? This man had the audacity to, to look at... You don't get any more plates. You already, you already fucked us. You fucked the team. Fuck you, buckaroo Come on, man. And look, the whole drop in place thing, there's a, y'all realize what that's for, right? I just want to, uh, there, there's a reason people do it. We don't just do it for fun. We, we do it to play positions, right? So like if we're holding an area and we're safe for a good amount of time, we're going to drop our plates so that if we take damage, we could go back and pick them up. That's why we drop the plates. I don't, I, I don't think they know because they just drop them when they have to move. It's a good habit, I guess. But remember, you don't have to drop your plates and be all clever and shit if you literally have to move out of your spot in six seconds. That's just a pet peeve. Practice good habits. Do what you want. But again, just that, that I feel like they didn't know I had to say it. I had it, The reason why is if you're sitting in an area for a long period of time, you're holding a high ground, you're holding a house, whatever it is, you're going to need some plates. Drop your plates. I get that. But right there, no. Body armor here. Thank God he bought plates. There's a whole fucking satchel right there. Good job, buckaroo. Guys, your boy is clearly not on sneak energy because if he was, he would have used his brain and thought about shit like that. Use code SAD to check out. And again, guys, I might have said it already in this video, but this new flavor, breakfast orange, it is literally sudden kiss on my taste buds. It's fucking... Nice. Fucking beautiful. My God. Oh, look at the bush. Here it comes. There we go. Hell yeah. That's smart. Savage, why are you being so mean to them? They just want to shoot. Okay, first off, best case scenario for this squad. They piss off tower, they shoot them, they knock them. That's it. They're at the end. You knock them. You're not going to kill them. You're not going to execute them. There's a nice rim protecting them. They got teammates. There's not, you're wasting your bullets. You're wasting your plates that you literally just dropped to save. Um, you're, and, you're, and you're putting yourself in a very shitty position. Look at the minimap. We're not in a position to be fighting anyone unless we absolutely have to. Instead of sitting here and, and waiting and just hunkered down, we instantly should have pushed through. 
before anyone spotted us. And they probably still would have spotted us, but at least we'd have been close to halfway there or maybe even halfway. Or we might have even fucking made it already. The last thing we want to do is that fight right there because now we've made noise. Not just as ATC pissed off now, but the rest of the map knows exactly where we're at too because we're the ones shooting. I'll be shocked if this team survives. Hey, yo, big, big brain play from your boy, Buckaroo. Big brain play. That's going to be their saving grace, I, I will say. I guess it works. Stop, stop, stop fighting tower, homie. Did Buckaroo break his fucking ankles? Again, bad spot. There's a, there's probably going to be a team behind us. Look at the buildings. There's usually a buy back there. This is dumb. We've got this hard building. We've marked orange telling our squad we want to go there. But yet here we are again fighting ATC with no cover. We have no cover. If you're, if you're staring at this video right now, you're like, yeah, we do savage. No, we fucking don't. This is called concealment. If you can shoot through it, it conceals you. It's not cover. Cover solid objects, right? Pretend... Fuck, pretend this is a metal wall right here, right? This would be considered cover. A pallet of bottles, water bottles, concealment. Kind of, they can still see through them. Why are we pissing off the world again without any cover? What are we doing? Come on, man. No reason for this shit. Buck Ruru's throwing hard right now, son. Again, pick up the bounty, grab the building. Now, building is what you want. You have, you might have to move in 20 seconds, but you want the building for... Oh, I was going to say it. You want the building for two reasons. One, better position, better cover. Two, there's probably a fucking team there. Lo and behold, judging by the sound of the Swiss, I believe, um, there is a team on top of that roof shooting too. It might not be the Swiss. It might be off on that. And this guy, big two hams, is just mind fucked. What's the best building now? Oh, yeah, the one we should have grabbed. Now, green and orange got a great job. They got a great position. But I just don't like the fact that... Look at this. I don't like the fact that... Purple's just playing the tent. He's dead center of the zone. He's going to be shot from people over here. Again, there still might be people up here. There's a little bit of lip. You could get pushed from the back. We're playing a very dangerous area. Purple's giving me fucking anxiety. These two guys are doing a good job. This dude's off by himself doing what Buckaroo does, probably throwing. Uh, but anyway, we got a team over here to fight. We definitely have a team ATC. So that's three of the six teams identified. How the fuck did you just die? Why did you just pick up a Bruin? I have so many questions. Run! Lack. Oh, just lack. Just a bad play in general, but also, uh. Oh, look, there's a guy over here. Fucking weird. Oh, look! All right, big two hams. You you weren't playing too good. I didn't I didn't think you'd pull it off, but I was hopeful. I was optimistic. The lack of trigger discipline on the guy with the Bruin, though. Holy fuck! He was just spraying, hoping someone would run right into his bullets. It's wild. You see that shit all the time. And again, we talk a lot about trigger discipline, but it's really not just, you know, not wasting bullets. It's not about not wasting bullets. It's not about like any of that. The whole thing with trigger discipline, the most important thing, there's a lot of benefits. The most important thing is practicing that reaction time of pulling the trigger when the tri when the crosshair is on the enemy. If you can rep that, even in situations like that, you'll be better at flicking, better at tracking. You'll just be better at aiming in general. The longer you players are out here, and I'm not taking shots, just again, learn. The longer you players out here just holding, praying, and spraying, and trying to drag your bullets to the enemy, the longer it's going to take you guys to get better at the game. Trigger discipline's a fucking must. Look at the target. 
aim at the target, shoot at the target. You never ever want to just spray and then slide to the target unless you're fighting multiple at the same time and you can just transition easy. And even then, you got to have trigger discipline. It's very rare you're going to see me actually just spray from one target to another. And it'll never happen um, in general. All right, but here we are again. There are still three other teams. No one's even worried about the team to our northeast. We got to get central. I don't like how teams play the center of the zone, especially when there's this many up. This is how you get third partied. A lot of us always complain about being third partied. Oh, Warzone, you get third party all the time. Fourth party, fifth, it's crazy. Always getting shot in the back by another squad. Well, most of the time, I'd say 75% of the time, we put ourselves in these positions. And this is one of those fucking times. Will they win? They might. It's not looking good. It just depends on how bad or good the enemies are. Again, the roof always was the best building to play. Weird, now we're being shot by two squads. Who would have called that, man? Weird. Ho. So fucking weird. And meanwhile, what is purple doing? Purple's fucking hiding. Okay. All right, Parsa. Ball out, brother. Your boy needs plates. I hope our teammate gives us some. It's not looking too promising. Yo, the odds of that. So we just got to survive. Actually, we don't even have to survive. We could technically die and be fine. You just have to land on your loot real quick. But again, the rooftop is one of the best spots to be in right now. Now, this is what fucks my head up. You probably will. Okay, where are the enemies at? Where are the enemy teams? Well, everything right here is a tent. I think this is a tent too. I'm pretty sure all of these are tents. The only hard cover is this building here. We know there's a team over here because they were shooting at us. If for some odd reason there's another one here, they're pussy for not shooting these guys because they're right on top of each other. Happens all the time though. It's fucking Call of Duty. That's just the way players play. What I think it is, is I think there's two teams in this building. I think there's one team on top and one team on the bottom. And then you're gonna have a team here. So again, there's still four teams up total. And it's about to get rowdy. There's about to be five enemies or five players coming back, three other enemies, and everyone's be pinging each other. So what do you do? Well, you can't really get a position to fight these guys because you'll get shot in the back from the guys in the building. I try to go for a pick on someone down here. Get fucking Lankin to come on top of us. That sounded real different, different than I meant for it to say. Get Lankin to come over here so we can bulldoze through here and hopefully kill a player or two and get some fucking plates because we're not in a winnable fight right now. No cover, no concealment, or no cover, very little concealment, and no plates. That's going to be crucial for Parsa. And now for Lankin too. Lit. Parsa knows he's fucked. I'm not sure what he's trying to do right now. Maybe there's some plates over here. There's another satchel. Not a shot. Okay, so now we got our squad back. Parsa died. Weird. No plates. Here, let's just rewind all the way. Hold up. All right, so Parsa ended up dying. We got two of our teammates back. Thought I heard bullets over here when we were shooting at these enemies. This is what I'm talking about, son. Dude, how many times have you guys experienced this too to where there are literally teams stacked on each other and no one's shooting at anyone else but you? Let me know in the comments right now. So I know it's about to blow up. I'm telling you right now, this happens to me all the time. I'll be, me and my squad, we'll be just fighting for our lives, us versus nine teams, and they're literally next to each other. No one's shooting them for some reason. Um, this is an unfortunate. This is the bad thing about Call of Duty because, again, everyone gets tunnel visioned. It's a good thing for the enemies. They get tunnel vision on you because they end up killing you. But the bad thing about tunnel vision, again, is they're not paying attention to the enemies close to them. That's actually a bigger threat. 
Now, I'm not saying this because I'm tired of this happening to me. I am tired of it happening to me. That's not why I'm saying this. What I'm saying this is because these guys should really be worried about each other. We are the least threat right now. We are a solo player hiding. These guys are teams of more than one. Five teams, nine players total, probably just one solo um, being us. So if I was any of these teams, I would be worried about each other, man. It's just, it blows my mind, but let's continue. So in this position, there's really not much you can do. This is where patience is crucial. Unfortunately, the game's got different decision for us as the circle is shifting the complete opposite direction. So it's, it, it is what it is. But right now, your best decision is while they're distracted, while they're shooting, go out the back door. There might be an enemy looking, maybe, but hopefully everyone's getting tunnel vision on what they're shooting at and you can make it out. Don't like that stem. So there was an enemy watching. Don't like that stem either. Right now we're going down the middle of the zone. You want to play the edge in this rotation just because again, you don't want to get sandwiched. Plus these guys already know we're over here. So the further we separate ourselves from this, these guys here, the more they'll get distracted with the enemies closer to them. Many reasons why we should be rotating around these tents and not through these tents. Good knock. Enemy are left. It's a 1v2, homie. Oh. Again, that was a very hard fight regardless. Uh, he ended up losing the 1v2, but... Yeah, I, I don't really have a critique for that. He needed plates. I get that. I, I respect it. I understand it. You're just kind of hoping in that situation there. They're not looking that direction, but they both were. So he would have died regardless. But again, great attempt on him trying to outplay that situation. Um, want to highlight one more time. We were going through here and here. I really would have liked to have seen him wrap around the tents, um, not to mention uh, us avoiding these fights. But also look where we're at. Look where the, the teams are at. They're looking the center. If we went around the outside, he probably wouldn't. He This guy definitely wouldn't have seen us. Easy might have, but it would have been a way better rotation. So again, man, when you're playing in game and you have a lot of teams stacked like that, try your best to play as passive as you can. I am a hyper aggressive player. I always encourage people to play aggressive until end game. When the, when the end of the game happens and the circle's that small, everything's out the window. It's all pure strategy. You, you've got to play like a chessboard. You cannot just be full sending people um, down the middle lane when everyone's going to be looking down that lane. Well, back a lot of mistakes that game, a lot of mistakes all of these games we spectate. But again, dude, every situation dictates a different strategy. So it's like, you know, people are like, Savage, what's that one strategy you would say is the most important? There's really not one that's the most important. It's a strategy will always change. What works for you in one situation will not work for you in another situation. It's all about the terrain. It's all about the RNG of the guns. It's all about the RNG of the teams you're playing against. It's all about where the circle's at. It's all about where the circle's edge is at. It's all about where you're positioning. There's so many fucking aspects of this game that your mind has to consistently turn on and turn off and change audibles on the fly. It's hard for players, for normal players like you guys or some of you guys watching. It's hard for some of you guys to do that because there's, it's already so much to think about. The reason for this channel, the reason I made these spectating videos wasn't just to sit here and make fun of players. That's an added bonus. Um, it honestly was to teach guys. I wanted you dudes to get dudes and dudettes to get better at the game. Um, and the first step to do that is just breaking the bad habits. The moment you guys watch these videos and you can see yourself in this gameplay i mean honestly laugh at it love it whatever but if you the, the sooner you see yourself in a lot of these gameplays the sooner it's going to click like oh fuck, maybe i shouldn't play like this and if you stop playing like this if you stop using heartbeats and bushes if you stop hiding in corners if you stop solo pushing when you have no business doing so if you stop using these dumbass weapons if you start working together if you just start doing the basic things and breaking those bad habits you got from multiplayer games and mmos and other things like that that it worked in Call of Duty multiplayer to be specific, you then can start working on fundamentals of strategy. I know that sounds weird since I'm trying to teach you guys strategy, but it's going to be hard enough for you guys to try to start learning how to be better shots, how to play positions better. If you're still dying to the same dumb mistakes you've been making for three years, I really hope that makes sense. If there's one tip I can tell everybody that make you a better player, break out of your bad habits. 
That's really what it's about, dude. Most of these things, when I'm like, weird and duh, and who would have fucking called that? I mean, this is common sense, bro. Most of this game is. And it, again, there's a lot of variables that will change, and you can play it perfectly, and you might not win the game. It's not about winning or losing to dictate if you're a good player or not. It's are you becoming a better player day in and day out? You don't have to be Joe O. You don't have to be up to my level. You don't even have to have a 2 KD or 1.5 KD. You can have a 1 KD. You can have a 0.5 KD. As long as you're striving to break out those bad habits and get better, you guys will see an improvement in your skill. You guys will see an improvement in quality of life when it comes to gaming. And you also see an improvement um, in just the amount of fun you're having because you're not consistently getting shit on and having terrible games every day. There are days like that for sure. God knows I've had a bunch, um, but there will also be days to make up for that that you're just like, man, I love this game. Um, so again, guys, break the bad habits. Get out there. Get better. Get ready for Warzone 2, man. Stop looking at your stats. Stop caring about your KD. Don't, stop taking screenshots of your pick. No one gives a fuck. Work on, game, work, on the play, work on your skill for you, all right?